What's up guys? So, a lot's been going on in my life. Uh, the last time I made a video, I was in Orlando traveling in my van until the whole COVID thing kind of took over. I have been home for two weeks. I went to West Virginia and met my parents there for their birthday. Now I'm back home, I've been home. Trying to come up with stuff to do, I really need to get a job, but my brother has this uh, VR6 MK4 Jetta project that we've been working on. He ran it a week ago at a local track. And he has a T3, geez, I don't even know what's that, Turbonetics Turbo on his 24 valve VR6 Engico BDF. And his turbo setup, uh, turbo manifold, to wastegate, um, just a random intake crap. Uh, what else did we do? He's got valve sp super tech valve springs in it. This is just a stock engine, stock piston, stock rods. He did, <laughs> he did spin a rod bearing because he forgot to put oil in it. It was, uh, it would leak oil and the catch can would fill up every once in a while. And it's kind of, you can see the oil level. It's got oil in it right now. And it did that probably because it had the stock bore in it, stock pistons, and when you turbo something like that, it leaks past the rings and it just burns oil. It wasn't bad, but it just did a little bit and over time, ate up the oil that was in the engine and he like kind of forgot to put oil in it and ran low. So, spun a rod bearing, we tried to replace it, it's done. It's done. He did run the other week and there was a little bit of rod knock, but he still was able to run it. He has an engine being built right now. He has... JE pistons, which are half a mil bigger, 81 and a half mil. So he's got a fresh bore and another engine. Whoa. He's got a fresh bore and another engine. Uh, he's going to put this head back on, like I said, super tech valve spring. So the valves won't float, piston won't hit it. He has stock connecting rods. He says a lot of guys run like 700 foot pounds of torque in these engines with the stock connecting rods, which are forged. He does have ARP bolts in them and he's getting the rod end like resized or re like honed or something yeah like rehoned to fit the crankshaft and like not have a weird oval shape when you when you clamp down with ARP rod bolts because they're stronger whatever stock rods that are forged forged pistons crankshafts forged um VR6 has oil squirter so that's good eight and a half to one compression ratio He's going to get a, we've been doing a bunch of research on turbos, and he's going to run a GT40, a Garrett GT40, which has the T4 flange on it. This exhaust manifold has a T3 flange on it, so new exhaust manifold, which I think I'm going to make, and different turbo. He's going to, he has like some parts, hold on, he has some parts, well, here, he has a new oil pan, and a bunch of just bearings and just well there's this, he's got all kinds of crap so this is basically a vr6 24 valve turbo project that we're working on we're going to be tearing this transmission down and that's the o2m this is the later style because the later style does not have that plastic cap it's all aluminum like the casting and let me brighten this up so we're gonna put a Wave limited slip diff in there, which I also have in my van. Um, it has a Subaru engine in it that I had to put reverse ring and pinion like gears in it and put a quaif in there. Dude, it's freaking sick. If you don't have a quaif diff, like not even quaif, limited slip diff, you're slipping big time. So, uh, quaif differential, these transmissions are known to let's see, the uh, dang it, let me let me set this camera now. So, these tra transmissions when they have a lot of torque applied to them the fourth gear is known to like spread apart like there's two shafts and they hold the gear and as you put torque it spreads them apart and it shears the teeth off because it just can't handle that much power so 
there's a little support thing we're gonna buy and there's also um, this company that makes a rod that they press into the input shaft and it stiffens the whole input shaft up so it won't flex the gears apart and we're gonna make probably just get a piece of 40 on 40 and turn it down to size shove it into the main shaft weld the end stiffen up that and it'll have a little brace on it uh limited slip diff we're going to basically just go through the trans make it strong because he's probably gonna be pushing like hopefully like 600 horsepower out of this uh we made a well basically i made a short ram intake for this thing that was like last year i didn't really cover that i don't know why i just didn't but um this basically started as a flat piece of aluminum kind of like what i'm standing on right here flat piece of aluminum uh i think it's two mil thick and there's a couple parts this thing will stay this part where all these mount on i think that's like three mil i wanted that thicker so all these could like support it and then be beefier I formed up all these and got them to size, made this flange, welded them all, and yeah, just formed us up. I got this, this is a piece of 10 mil uh, with eight MPTs tapped in it. Obviously I made this thicker to get some thread engagement instead of sheet stock. So this is like a decent chunk of aluminum over here. Made up a um, throttle body flange. There's an O-ring groove machined in there, just like the stock intake, which is over here. This is a stalker, which can't handle that much boost because it's plastic, but you can see on this flange, maybe, there's like an O-ring groove. Dang it. There's an O-ring groove, and if this thing would focus, come on. So there's that O-ring groove, and that seals off the throttle body. Kind of just copied that. Actually, use the stock OEM O-ring for that, and what else? Made this flange. That flange holds the oil dipstick. This, uh, dude, this thing is freaking sick. This is probably one of the coolest things I've made. It's a lot of TIG welding, and dude, it's freaking holding up great. Um, he has a tile, that's a diverter valve, which he's going to get, that's another thing he's gonna get. Uh, ECU Master, ECU Master, uh, standalone ECU. We're debating on this is an MK4 BDF, which is almost the exact same as the R32 engine. I don't know what engine code that is, but it's 3.2 instead of a 2.8. Like this is a 2.8, and we're debating on if he can use the, they have a plug and play that goes from the ECU black to the stock wiring harness and that. And dude, these engines are like the exact same thing as the R32. I need to look at the wiring diagrams and make sure the pinouts for these are like close and we can run that because it's like 800 bucks and dude it's got mass features and it's a freaking standalone like right now he has a united Motorsports sports 630 tune i think and dude it's like it's good but you can't adjust something like anything and we installed a watt box to get the launch and the flat foot down which does help like a ton i don't drive this thing but he uh when he was running it dude he was freaking shifting like a beast he was running dude he almost got into the 13s. He was sliding all over the place with these street tires. Open diff. That's why we're putting a limited in here, in here because, dude, the open diff sucks. Front wheel drive, which is kind of weak, but he's going to build this. And then once he gets this all done, this all figured out, he's going to start building on an R32. And this is the same engine, so he'll know pretty much exactly. Like, this is like a practice car. Dude, he's 19. He's 19 years old, and he's never done this before I've never done this before I've just worked on this van over here 1988 van again which is pretty much what this channel is about but in this I guess this is gonna be like a new series it's gonna be VR6 turbo project so what I'm gonna do right now is probably lift this thing up start separating the engine from the trans because this thing needs cleaned it's been in there for Jeez, since 2003, 2002 really, it's a 2003 Jetta. I'm gonna tear this thing apart. Turbo and exhaust manifold are off. And I just wanna say that this exhaust manifold is literally the cheapest one you can get on eBay. And there's a lot of people 
like going back and forth on whether or not these are good and some people say they warp some people say they suck like leak whatever but dude we've ran this for uh probably a year now and it's fine like it hasn't leaked it's super freaking heavy and i mean you can see that's probably like a geez like a 14 mil maybe 12 14 mil thick steel the flange and i mean you can see it's not leaking right there man that's not even that's not a leak there's two spots obviously one there one there and uh i don't know what it is but it's like a it's like a relief in the gasket and dude it's freaking good this turbo was good but the only thing i mean it spins it spins good now it didn't really want to spin before there's zero play um the line that we were robbing the right here this is the oil filter housing that line which is where the original oil pressure sensor is um dude that's unfiltered unfiltered oil straight to the turbo spun rod bearing <laughs> done i don't know if it's done because the turbonetics has a sorry this turbonetics has a filter over here where that is that's where the inlet like the high pressure side goes to the turbo there's like a little filter on there Dude, I don't know how good that is. I'm sure particles got in there. But Schimmel Performance makes a filtered oil filter, not filtered, but it's an oil filter housing that you bolt on here and it gets rid of all this stock stuff. And I might put, I'll post it in the link, the comment, the description. But um, it's, you bolt it on. There's several MPT, maybe M10 by one for the stock oil pressure sensor there's ports on the top of it and it uses just a three quarter 10 or something thread which is like a standard thread that a lot of cars use you can just get a regular like screw on filter and the port for the turbo feed is filtered which will save your turbo so this is like an 800 dollars turbo it's not a complete loss but it still kind of sucks because there's not that much time on it um I don't know if my brother will be selling this, but he gets on the Facebook page, VR6, some kind of page. I don't know. I might post that in the description too. But um, we were running that oil filter line to this little splitter, this 42 draft design splitter that went to the turbo. That is the oil pressure sensor. It's an electronic one that goes to his gauge pod on the inside, stock oil pressure. And with that Schimmel oil filter housing you don't need that crap because there's ports in the top of it that you can just directly like connect to so his oil filter his oil turbo line will just go straight from there around to his gt40 and he won't need that splitter in line with you know the pressurized oil um so this is unfiltered oil if you're boosting an engine dude try to get try to make sure the um the feed the turbo, the oil feed is filtered because if it's not, if you grenade your engine, you're like kind of roasting your turbo too. And if you don't roast your turbo and you put that on another engine like this, like his new one that he just got a fresh bore in, new pistons, like everything's good, all the new rod band, like everything's new. Um, you're putting a turbo on your engine that you don't know if there's like metal shavings in and that goes through your oil pump. <sighs> you don't want to do that. So... Yeah, just make sure your stuff's filtered. Your line is filtered. Um, what am I gonna do? I got that off. I guess I'm gonna start separating that trans. Engine, tranny, <laughs> is separated. Uh, here we have a stock dual mass flywheel. I think that means that there's two parts of that flywheel and I don't know if they're riveted together or bolted, or bolted together. Um, I guess they like come apart at high RPMs, high horsepower, so he has a spec clutch which can hold, which can hold like, I don't know, 580 foot-pounds, 590 foot-pounds, close to 600, um, that he bought, geez, a long time ago. And that's going on. Dude, this thing held. He was probably pushing like 400 horsepower, maybe like at least 350. And, dude, this thing was holding. I don't know how, because it has 100,000 miles on it, but it was holding up. This exhaust 
manifold. He's running a T4 turbo, which you know that he had a T3, which is not going to work. Um, hold on a second. These stock flanders that he miraculously saved, and he also cut off the uh, exhaust, so he has a flange. And these people put these. Actually, I want to put this on. They put these on their engines. Shoot, that's the wrong side. Hold on. So they put these on the, their engines, and with these flanges, they make a pipe come up, and they make a they have a mount here, like a T4 mount, and they make their own uh, turbo manifold. They make their own turbo manifold. Let me darken this up. They make their own turbo manifold. So. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to make one of them because I know he's not gonna want to spend five, eight, twelve hundred dollars on a nice manifold because, dude, I, we want to do this once, and this turbo is gonna be freaking huge, and this is gonna be the setup he's gonna run from here on out. So, yeah, this is gonna be. I was researching um, stainless steel that already have like bends in them. You can buy just like chunks of stainless, like. I think this is close to two inch on each side and you can buy just random shapes and sizes on eBay cut off yourself and make an exhaust I made the downpipe on his current setup which he's gonna sell but I made that from basically what I just said um, this obviously came with a turbo welded that to it and just kind of made it freaking work and you can see how there's every angle that that comes up to this guy you can tell that they were already like pre-bent uh, and I just take them together, made it work. So that's probably what I'm, we're gonna do with this turbo manifold. Mm -hmm. 